Hey, it's Jake, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you about the power pin sandwich, which is just another technique that I've named after a food and hopefully you enjoy. It's a really weird one, but I think that it's really useful, so let's just jump in. When creating the effects of After Effects series, I covered the CC power pin effect and learned about an unusual checkbox called unstretch. It was something I didn't know about, but a commenter helped me understand exactly what it was used for. So if you wanna know its exact purpose, check out the card above and go watch that original tutorial. But I've learned some ways to use it in a less practical way, more of an unusual way, but still, pretty helpful. So let's jump into After Effects and I just have a text layer here. If I apply CC Power Pin, the four corner pins are gonna jump to the corners of my comp and that's because of the way that After Effects looks at vector layers. And let me show you exactly what I mean. If I turn on my logo and apply CC Power Pin to it, this is an Illustrator layer that doesn't have the continuously rasterized switch turned on, meaning After Effects is looking at this as if it's a footage layer. And with the effect selected, I can see those four corner pins are attached to the four corners of my layer. If I scale it up or down, those are going to stay pinned to the four corners of that footage layer until I continuously rasterize it. As soon as I did that, those four pins jump to the four corners of the comp. It doesn't matter where I move the layer, those pins will always stay right there. And that's really frustrating, but it shows you exactly how After Effects is distinguishing the way that it renders a footage item versus a vector layer. And I made another tutorial covering some workarounds on how to get these point controls to actually stick to vector layers. Again, check out the card above if you wanna learn about that. But I wanna talk about the more unusual use of this CC Power Pin Unstretch feature and apply it to a text layer. So what I'm gonna do is start by selecting my Power Pin effect and grab the corner pins and drag them towards the corners of the text layer. It doesn't need to be 100% precise right now. I'm just gonna try and generally get it near the edges of that bounding box. And that obviously distorted my text. It doesn't look all that great. But I'm going to check that unstretch checkbox and you'll see that my text is now basically filling the comp. And that's what this unstretch feature is doing. It's taking wherever you put those corner pins and then pushing them back out to the actual layer size, which to After Effects is the size of the comp in the case of this text layer. Now I can modify these pins a little bit more to try and align this to the edges of the comp. But that's really just to show you what this unstretch feature is doing. What I really want is for these four pins to be stuck to the corners of the text, but we'll get to that in a second. The next step of this unusual process is to duplicate CC Power Pin and uncheck unstretch. And magically, my text is right back where it was, except I now have an instance of CC Power Pin with corner points exactly where I want them near the corners of my text layer. So I can grab this and stretch it just like any other layer that isn't vector. And that can be really great when you wanna do some distortion on text without having to pre-compose and crop it. This way, you can keep working right on that same text layer in the main comp without having to do any of that extra process. And it even allows you to do some other pretty cool things like apply an effect between these two instances of CC Power Pin. So if I add a Venetian blinds effect right between the two and I set the completion to 50%, I'm now applying this prior to the distortion of the second instance of CC Power Pin. So so if I set this to a perfect 90 degrees and make it a little bit wider so we can see it easier, you'll notice this is following the distortion of whatever I set this to. And that's really powerful. It's basically like pre-composing the text without having to pre-compose it. But there is still the drawback of if I grab my text layer and move it around, that distortion is not going to move with it. So how can we fix this? It's gonna be using some expressions, source rect at time. If you don't know this expression, I have another tutorial for it. Again, click that card above if you wanna learn all about it. I'm gonna go a little bit faster through this in this tutorial. But if you just follow my steps, you'll get this to work exactly the way that it's supposed to. So first things first, I'm gonna get rid of the Venetian blinds and the second instance of CC Power Pin, and I wanna apply expressions to each one of these corner point controls. So I'm just gonna start by double clicking top left, and we're going to add an expression to it by Alt or Option clicking on that stopwatch. And we need to write some variables. A variable is basically just shorthand, so you can reference a longer expression code in a much shorter format. And the first two properties that I wanna write variables for are the X and Y position for this text layer. I wanna target that point, that anchor point right there with variables. So I'm gonna start by typing VAR for variable, X for X position, that really can be whatever you want. I just try to keep my variables as short as possible so it's easier to write them. And then I'll type in transform.position 
open square bracket, zero, closing square bracket, and semicolon. And what this is saying is look for the transform controls on this layer, then the position value on this layer, and specifically the X position. This is how we target the X or Y part of the array. We start with an open square bracket and say zero, that is the first index in that array, the X position and one would be Y. So I'm gonna copy and paste this line right after that and type in Y instead of X and one instead of zero. And that's going to give me the Y position for this text layer. Now if I drop down two lines and write my own array starting with an open square bracket and just type in X comma Y and finish that off with a semicolon, now I'm telling this top left corner pin to go to the X and Y position values of the text layer. So if I apply the effect, then my text gets all distorted, but I'll select my CC power pin. And sure enough, my top left numbers are now red, meaning they're being driven by expressions. And there it is right underneath the anchor point. That is where the corner pin is gone. I'm gonna uncheck unstretch just for a minute so we can see this a little bit more clearly. If I move the others around, sure enough, top left is right there at the anchor point. And that's the reference point that I want for all four of these properties. But we need to write a handful more variables so we can account for the width, height, and some other properties of this text layer size. So let's write another variable. VARS for source rec to time basically equals this layer with a capital L dot source rect at time. It's gonna autofill for me. And then a semicolon to finish that off. That line of code right there is going to be used in the next four variables I write, which is why I stored it in a variable, because now I can drop down a line and say var w for width equals s, the variable I just wrote, dot width. And I'll finish that with a semicolon. I'll do the same thing for the height. var h equals s dot height. Then I need one for the top. var t equals s dot top. And var l equals s dot left. Now, I realize that was a lot of variables, a lot of typing, but you can copy and paste this code in the description of the video if you don't wanna type it all out yourself. Now that I've stored all this information in variables though, it's gonna be very easy for me to customize my array down here. For the top left corner pin, I want that to obviously go up and to the left. To do that from the anchor points reference, I need to say X plus left, which is the distance between the anchor point and the left edge of the text, so X plus L, and I'll click off to apply the expression. Now with that effect selected, you can see that the corner pin has jumped over to the left edge of the text. That's perfect, but now I need to account for the height of the layer on the Y values. And I'm gonna do that with the top property. This is the distance between the anchor point and the top of the text. So I'm gonna add Y plus T to account for that. And now my CC power pin top left corner is aligned to the top left corner of my text layer. From here, it's actually just a matter of copying and pasting this expression to the other properties and slightly modifying their array. So for the top right, I'm going to use that same Y value, but on the X, I need to account for the width of the text as well. So I'm going to add a plus W to add the width of the text layer. And now my top right corner pin is right where it needs to be. Now I can go to the bottom left and paste in that original expression and the X value is gonna stay the same because we need it on the left edge. I'll just apply it so we can see it's going to the top left corner. For that vertical axis on the Y position, I need to account for the height of the layer and I actually wanna leave that plus top value in there. I just now also want to add plus height. What that's going to do is make sure it actually goes to the corner of the layer. If I didn't have that plus top, or the plus H, then it's just going to align with that anchor point, which isn't actually where the bottom of the text is. So I need to have that plus top plus height to get it locked in place. Finally, I'm gonna copy and paste that version of the expression into bottom right, paste that in, and now the Y position is the same. I just need to add in the width on the X position. So X plus L plus W, and that's gonna lock it in place on the bottom right corner all four corners are now exactly where I want them, no matter what the text size is. If I go into my text, it's gonna scale up or down. Obviously the text does not look right, but if I unstretch it, it's gonna to go to the entire comp size. Then I can duplicate this effect, uncheck unstretch, all the expressions are preserved, and now I can literally move this layer around. The effects are going to stay pinned to the corners of the text. I could change this to anything else, and it's going to always stick right where it's supposed to. Now that we have all that out of the way, you could save that as a preset, never have to type in that stuff again. But what are some things we can do with this? Well, you could actually make a text box, which normally involves 
Shape layers, if I scale this down a little bit and go into my effects and presets and add a solid composite effect between these two and change this to a different color, then we're gonna get a text box behind that text. Again, it's sized precisely to the edges of the text layer. No matter what you do to it, if you wanna change the justification or the size, the font, it will always be locked in place. And I already showed you how you could apply some texture using Venetian blinds, but that really is pointless if we're not gonna be able to distort the actual text layer, which we can't right now because all of these are locked in place with expressions, unless we go in and add in some extra controls. So I'm gonna add a slider control to this effect stack. I'll just search for slider. This is an expression control that doesn't do anything on its own, but I can reference it in my expressions. So I'm going to rename it margin, and I'm gonna use this basically as an offset for those four corner pins. So I'm gonna double tap the E key to bring up the expressions and start with the top left corner. What I need to do is write another variable for that margin. So VARM equals, and then I'll use my expression pick whip and grab that slider. This will auto fill in that text. I'll finish it off with a semicolon. Now I can incorporate that into my array. Basically, I want to add this value to the position value of the top left corner in both the horizontal and vertical axes. But I have to think about where the position of these points are because I want them all to go outwards. So for the top left, I want this to go negative on the X and negative on the Y, left and up. So I'm going to say X plus L minus margin and Y plus T minus margin. Now, if I increase this value, the CC power pin is going to move up and to the left. That's not happening for my second instance, but don't worry about that yet. The point is it's working the way that I want it to. Now I just need to copy and paste this variable into the other three expressions and then incorporate that into those arrays as well. So for the top right, instead of subtracting the margin on the X, I want to add the margin on the X and I want to subtract on the Y. Now that's getting pushed up into the right. Then I'll go to the bottom left, paste in that variable, I again want to subtract the margin on the X, but this time add the margin on the Y. And for the bottom right, paste in the variable and add the margin on both the X and the Y. Now that margin is going to increase or decrease to whatever I set this value to. To get all of these values to also respect that margin, I'm just gonna quickly pick whip all of these values. So I'm gonna press E to bring up the effects of my layer and then open up the two instances of CC power pin. Then I'll just use my expression pick whip to grab the top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. Now, why would I go through the trouble of doing that? Because now I can go into the expressions we just created and bring back my ability to actually move these pins around just by adding a very simple expression at the end plus value with a semicolon at the end. Now that's gonna mess things up royally, but all I have to do is zero out the value and it's gonna go back to where it should be. So I'm gonna do that same plus value to each one of these, plus value, zero out the property on the remaining properties. Plus value, zero comma zero, and then finally for the bottom right, plus value, zero, zero. Now not only is everything respecting that margin and I can offset this as much as I want, but I can also grab the second instance of CC power pin and freely distort it while still maintaining that ability to change my text to say anything else. So there we go, I now have a completely responsive rig using CC power pin that allows me to place this distortion however I want, build in this margin, add in a text box, maybe even add in some texture to it with an effect like Venetian blinds. Again, I wanna place that just before the second instance of the power pin effect. I can increase this to 50, rotate it around, increase the width and get some really interesting looking patterns maybe turn that completion down a little bit so I don't lose so much of my text. But the point is that it's all set up and ready to go. You don't have to remember any of what I just taught you. You can literally just save these effects as a preset. Just have both of them selected to come over to here and say save animation preset and save it wherever you'd like. 
All right, I realize that was a whole lot of talking. It's kind of a weird use case for the CC power pin effect, but I think it is definitely worth knowing. It's one of those weird hacks that is definitely gonna come in useful in some scenarios. So I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did like the video, please give it a like. Leave me a comment if you've ever used this technique before, or if you've thought of a way that you might be able to use it in the future. I love to see how these tutorials can kind of help people become more creative artists. Thank you so much to all of my patrons over on Patreon. As always, I am super grateful for all of the support you give me to help create more tutorials like this one. If you're interested in becoming a patron, check out the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.